Hey people, it's not as talking. Now, as I promised, I wanted to do a series on another Black Traitors video. So this is about Eunice Rivers Lori, the nurse who took part in the Tuskegee syphilis experiment. Now, I want to give a word. This source I'm using, I don't believe is 100% accurate, but it came up and seemed to have the most information. So anyway, I will leave other sources and you can read through them. Let's get to it. Beautiful also are the souls of my black sisters, black women in America, Eunice Rivers Laurie. Many people are familiar with the now infamous 1932 Tuskegee syphilis study. For 40 years, the state, federal, and local government allowed syphilis-infected black men of Macon County, Alabama to go untreated for their bad blood to see the effects of primary, secondary, and tertiary syphilis on them. During the time of the so-called study, the discovery of penicillin in 1947, a cure for the treatment of syphilis occurred. But the treatment was withheld from the infected men. The research conducted by Macon County Public Health Service, PHS, included the official condonement by Tuskegee for the study, the key physicians, the syphilis men, doctors Talia Farrell Clark, Oliver Wenger, John Heller, and Raymond von der Leer, Dr. Robert Moton, president of Tuskegee Institute, and Dr. Eugene Dibble, head of the John Andrew Hospital at the Institute. Sociologist Charles Johnson, who conducted the study to obtain data on the poor black citizens of Macon County, and nurse Eunice Rivers. Never mind the health of their wives and girlfriends, never mind the devastation of lying syphilis to run rampant in the black community when those are treatment for it. Just to see human beings as experiments in the eyes of America's Joseph Mengele medical community was enough. One person often cited in the nurse, in this case is Nurse Eunice Rivers, her maiden name at the time of the study. The spinal taps on the black men insultingly called back shots, the lies told on the men that they were being treated and the signing of documents they were led to believe or belly policy, which were in fact signing away their bodies for medical research when they died from the disease, all point to a long history of medical experiments on black people since they have been in this nation. The Tuskegee syphilis study is one of the most hateful acts of government brutality against the citizens. When the case broke via the Washington Star in 1972 to the public, 30 of the men had died directly of syphilis, 100 had died of tertiary complications, 40 of the men's wives were infected, and 19 of their children were born of congenital syphilis. Lawsuits were filed by the surviving men and their families, and the federal government enacted a National Research Act. July 12, 1974, which along with the Belmont Report, April 8, 1979, was created to identify the basic ethical principles that should underlie the conduct of biomedical and behavior research involving human subjects and to develop guidelines which should be followed to assure that such research is conducted in accordance with these principles. The legacy of the Tuskegee study remains a barbaric episode in America's long continued insult against the sanctity and humanity of our black citizens. As for Nurse Rivers, villain or defenseless pawns, you readers can decide after reading her story. Eunice Verdell Rivers, hang on, let me just have a moment here. Okay. Eunice Verdell Rivers, nurse, public health advocate. Eunice Rivers may have been one of America's most controversial and frequently discussed black, black public health nurse. In 1958, she was given the U.S. Department of Health, Education, and Welfare's highest honor, the Ovida Culp Hobby Award for her notable service covering 25 years, during which, through selfless devotion and skillful human relations, she has sustained the interest and cooperation of the subjects of a venereal disease control program in Macon County, Alabama. Keep in mind what Malcolm X said, any per black person eh, given awards by white people is an enemy of black people. Well, basically, anyway. Fourteen years later, media coverage revealed that the control program was in reality what would be considered the United States' longest-running unethical medical experiment. Nurse Rivers, as she was called in her community, had been crucial in sustaining the Tuskegee syphilis study. It was a 40-year study, 1931-72, to by the U.S. Public Health Service for late-stage syphilis in 399 black American men and 201 others as controls that kept itself ignorant of their disease and their experimental status while working to deny them treatment. When black Americans expressed their concerns and fears of treatments at the hands of healthcare practitioners and scientists, Tuskegee became the one word simple for centuries of abuse. Nurse Rivers' role in the study would remain a subject of debate among the public, media, artists, and scholars for generations. Eunice Verdell Rivers, born in early county Georgia, the oldest child of free in the family of Albert and Henrietta Rivers. Miss Ri Rivers' mother died when she was 15, and her father gained a modicum of independence by working a small farm as well as toiling in a soil sawmill. This kind of independence could be dangerous. A Ku Klux Klan bullet whizzed into their home after Albert Rivers was wrongly accused of aiding the escape of a black man wanted for the murder of a white policeman. To save the family, Albert Rivers moved them away and stayed to protect his home. 
Eunice Rivers' father also took a stand for her education. He sent her off to a school on the tutelage of a cousin in Fort Gaines, Georgia, and then to a mission boarding school in Thomasville. When Albert Rivers discovered the mission school had only white teachers in the upper grades, he pulled his daughter out, one year shy of high school graduation, and sent her to the Black Run Tuskegee Institute in Alabama in 1918. Eunice Rivers spent her first year at Tuskegee learning handicrafts in keeping with the school's philosophy of vocational education. But Albert Rivers wanted more for his daughter and encouraged her to switch to nursing. Graduating in 1922, she did some private nursing and was subsequently hired to travel to Tuskegee's Institute's movable school. A truck that carried an agricultural extension and home demonstration agents, a public health nurse, and their equipment into Alabama's countryside. Nurse Rivers focused primarily on the health needs of black women and children, teaching basic health education, civil sanitation methods, and child care. She also demonstrated cleanliness techniques to Alabama's extensive network of midwives. At the time, she was one of only four black public health nurses in the entire state. She worked for the state's Bureau of Vital Statistics and devised techniques for midwives to report births accurately. Nurse Rivers' great skill was her non-judgmental understanding of the medical beliefs of rural black Americans and her support of their dignity and individual needs in medical encounters. By 1931, the state had to cut its workforce, and Nurse Rivers lost her position. She was then hired as a night supervisor at Tuskegee's John A. Andrew Hospital. Eight months and many sleepless nights later, Nurse Rivers was offered a new half-day, half-time day position as a scientific assistant to what was referred to in the medical literature, a study of untreated syphilis in the male Negro. The racist beliefs of the time held that syphilis manifested itself differently in blacks as compared to whites, which is common. One of the reasons why black people do not receive painkillers as much as whites is because the, the belief that blacks do not experience pain. The study was done because of the belief of racists in the medical field and much of American society that blacks were a notoriously syphilis-soaked race. Nurse Rivers' job for the next 40 years was to find men for the study, follow up on their condition, assist in their examinations, which included painful spinal taps, provide aspirin and tonics, gain agreement from many of their families for autopsies, and modify the primarily white physician's behavior towards their subjects in Quotes, she also helped the men's families in numerous ways, providing referrals to doctors and food for the hungry. Some of the Tuskegee study group ph- ph- clinicians, Dr. Reginald James Wright, Dr. Reynald, Reginald D. James, referred to Wright, a black physician involved with public health work in Macon County, was not directly involved in study. Oh, that's a photo. Uh, you can look at that one and leave the source. Nurse Rivers was an integral to community life in Tuskegee. We're working on the study. She was also employed in the maternal and child health clinics at the U- Institute's hospital and taught in his nursing school. She was also active in the Red Cross and the Greater St. Mark's Missionary Baptist Church in Tuskegee. Numerous awards testified to her nursing skills. In 1952, she married Julius Laurie, an orderly at the hospital. Let's just keep going. When the story of the study broke on the Associated Press Wire on July 26, 1972, it caused an uproar across the nation. Charges of racism, genocidal medicine, and paternalism gone awry were among the outrage criticisms of the healthcare system's system notorious willingness to use poor people, especially black Americans, for experimentation without any kind of consent. Senator Edward M. Kennedy convened hearings in the United States Senate. A federal investigation condemned the study. The institutions and governmental units of involved offered very just justifications in a class action lawsuit filed by the prominent civil rights attorney Fred Gray ended in a $10 million out-of-court settlement for survivors and their families. The outcry was instrumental in, the cre- in creation of institution review boards, RRBs, to monitor human uh, subject research. Nurse Rivers, however, was never called before the Senate panel hearing or named in the lawsuit. Different interpretations of Nurse Rivers' w- role were put forward. The attorney, Fred Gray, argued she was much a victim as were the male subjects. In Miss Evers' Boys, a widely produced play and television movie that is a fictionalization of the story, the playwright and physician David Felshu showed Nurse Rivers torn between her devotion to the men and the black and white white physicians assurances that she was doing pro- was pro- she she was doing was proper. Nursing emphasis have pointed to her lack of power. Historian has found evidence that Nurse Rivers may have helped some of the men to get treatment and leave the study. Based on the available health care resources, Nurse Rivers believed that the benefit of the study to the men outweighed the risks. She knew the men received no treatment for syphilis, but she explained honestly those people got all kinds of examinations and medical care that they never would have gotten. I've taken them over to this hospital and they've had a GI series on them, the heart, the lung, just everything. It's impossible for just an ordinary person to get that kind of examination. Which means nothing. Syphilis is absolutely devastating. If you're not treated for that, well, you're fucked no matter what treatments you're getting. 
She continually asserted that the men, the men received good medical care despite the fact that the men received mostly diagnostic, not curative, services. The most basic of medical care had done to gauge the development of syphilis in the men after she had earned their most utmost uh, trust. Trust in her while the disease worked its ravages on them in body and mind. Trust in her while the men in their infectious state were infecting the women in their lives. Yet as Rivers maintained, they'd get all kinds of extra things, cardiograms and some of the things I had never heard of. This is the thing that really hurt me about the unfair publicity. Those people have been given better care than some of us who could afford it. <laughs> Just, god damn, the levels of delusion. Again, if this is what she actually said, but I uh, wouldn't put it past them to do that. After public censure forced the hold of the experiment, Nurse Rivers declared her innocence in the face of criticism on the grounds that she insisted she acted on her own convictions. She emphasized, I don't have any regrets. You can't regret doing what you did when you knew you were doing right. I knew, know from my personal feelings how I felt. I feel I did good in working with the people. I know I didn't mislead anyone. I want you to remember something. So, penicillin became widely available in 1947. She didn't tell them that what they were being done to them, and she didn't try to provide any of that medication to them for 25 years. Nurse Rivers remained convinced that she had acted in the best interests of poor black men. <laughs> okay. Table depicting them off. Yeah, that's another JPEG. The physicians who headed this experiment unanimously agreed that the experiment was worth doing. Dr. Talio Ferro Clark was happy when they began work on the study and confided to a friend. I am confident the results of this study, if anywhere near our expectation, will attract worldwide attention. Well, he was right about that. Dr. Oliver Winger's hopes ran even higher. With more foresight than he could possibly realize, he predicted it will either cover his murder or glory when completed. Nurse Rivers died in Tuskegee. On May 16, 1997, more than a decade later, President Bill Clinton apologized to the last eight survivors and the nation for the federal government's role in the study. America never had a chance to hear Nurse Rivers tell the public what she really thought of her involvement in the Tuskegee syphilis study. Mm -hmm. Now, there's some comments here, but I'm not going to read them. I'm just going to say what I think. Now, she will say that she was a nurse. I'm just projecting. And that she was just doing her job. Even if that was the case, she could have just quit her job and maybe found employment somewhere else. And just like all the black cops who cover up the murder of black people, they had a choice. Remember what Kanye said, slavery is a choice. To keep these things going, a lot of people knew about it and did nothing. So I hope you've enjoyed this Black Traders video. I'm going to leave this in the description. And I'm going to try and leave other sources there as well. Please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, I'll leave it there as well. If you'd like to support the channel, leave my GoFundMe there as well. And if you want to buy one of my t-shirts, you can check that link out as well. Peace!